Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, it's 11.30 on the dot. We have 97% battery power. That's not bad, is it? No, that's good. We're going to do some reading. The law of attraction. Okay, where was we up to? We have the worksheet. Okay, what am I including in my vibrational bubble? Okay, let's have a look at this. Um... My Vibrational Bubble Worksheet. Well, let's have a look because we kind of left with a blank sheet here and there were some statements that we that I read out and you were to put them in your Vibrational Bubble. Okay. That's that. You're going to put them in your Vibrational Bubble because the next page is exactly what they've done. They've just really... They've actually listed all of them. And it said, can you see how everything gets included? So notice that when you say no to something, you just give it attention. Oh, you just gave it attention, energy and focus. In that moment, it also becomes included in your vibrational bubble. Giving anything attention of any kind includes it in your vibrational bubble. So there was um, some positive and negatives within them statements. We're not going to uh, reread it. It's like we were tricked. Is that going in your vibrational bubble or out of it? And it's like just by putting your attention to it, you included it. So there's two tools for raising your vibration to fuel your desire. One of the keys to make the law of attraction work for you lies in keeping your desires within your current vibration i.e. your vibrational bubble. In the next few pages, I'll explain how affirmations may or may not be helping you include your desire in your vibrational bubble, and I'll give you a great tool that can help you reword your affirmations so they do work. Also, I'll introduce you to another tool I call the desire statement. This effective tool ensures that you, ensures that you are including and keeping your new desire in your vibrational bubble. It is especially useful when dealing with new desires that may be forgotten, if not given, deliberate attention. First, let me explain why using affirmations may not be raising your vibration. I'm not going to skip this part. Why using affirmations may not raise your vibration. An affirmation is a statement spoken in the present tense and used to declare a desire. Saying I have a happy, slender body is an example of a positive affirmation. So by saying I have a healthy, slender body is an example of a positive affirmation. Each time you read your affirmation, you'll have a reaction based upon how the words make you feel. Remember the law of attraction. Remember the law of attraction responds to the vibrations you send out based on how you feel, not based on specific words you use. If, for example, you tell yourself that you have, you have a happy, slender body when you do not, or when having a happy, slender body feels unattainable, You'll create negative vibrations. Oh, my ears just went totally blank, like it was... I was just cut off then. Whoop! Wait till I show you the photo. It will all make sense. <clears throat> if, for example, you tell yourself that you have a ha happy, slender body when you do not, or when having a happy, slender body feels unattainable, you'll create negative vibrations. You'll send out a vibration of doubt. A negative vibration, which the law of attraction will respond to by giving you more of the same, even though it's an unwanted. Okay, so let's have a look at this dude here looking in the mirror, and there's a statement he has pinned up in the mirror, and it says, I have a happy, slender body. Okay. A positive affirmation can have a negative vibration. Most affirmations don't work because the law of attraction doesn't respond to words. It responds to how you feel 
about the words you use. On the, on the following page, you'll see a list of positive affirmations. After reading, reading each statement, ask yourself which vibration you are sending, negative or positive. Okay, so there's a little tick box here. Plus or minus, negative, positive or negative. Okay. The first one is, all my family relationships are home harmonious. Positive or negative? I love my body. I'm a millionaire. My business is booming. I have ideal health. I have a perfect life mate. Question. When would these affirmations offer a positive vibration? Answer. When they are true for you. Should we go back over them? All my family relationships are harmonious. I love my body. I'm a millionaire. My business is booming. I have ideal health. I have a perfect life mate. When you state something that is not true for you, you are offering a negative vibration because the statement activates doubt within you. As you state the affirmation, a part of you says, that's not true. My family relationships aren't harmonious. That's not true. I don't love my body. That's not true. I'm not a millionaire yet. That's not true. My business isn't booming. That's not true. I don't have ideal health. That's not true. I don't have a perfect life mate. The key to using affirmations is that they need to be true for you in order to make you feel good. On the, fo on the following page, I'll give you a tool to help you reword an affirmation so it is always true for you, thus enabling you to send out a positive vibration. The law of attraction responds to how you feel about what you say and how you feel about what you think. Okay, let's carry on. Tool number one, rewording your affirmations to make them feel better. Some of you have been taught to always state your affirmations in the current tense. Here I'm suggesting that you are in the process, the process, the process of manifestation, actually starts when you think about your desire, talk about it, write about it, or when you give it any kind of attention, energy and focus. So the truth is you are in the process. When you say, I'm in the process of, that sentence becomes true. And if it's true for you, it feels good, which is a positive vibration. Let's revisit the statements on the previous page, starting each sentence with the following. I'm in the process of. I'm in the process of creating ideal family relationships. I'm in the process of enjoying my body more and more. I'm in the process of becoming more abundant. I'm in the process of growing my business. I'm in the process of having ideal health. I'm in the process of attracting an ideal mate. Now each statement is true for you. When a statement is true for you, it feels good. When it feels good, you are sending a positive vibration, which the law of attraction responds to by bringing you more of the same. Okay, we're going to leave it there and we shall pick up with tool number two next time we pay this oh, book a visit. We need to put the page down. Okay. Okay, here comes Mr. Maintenance Man out there mowing the lawn. I want to have a look at the Chuckle Wisdom card. I didn't know I did, but I do. Um, the tarot cards. It's gone a bit chilly. The sun did go away. It's like, hey, I thought it was coming round to the kitchen. <clears throat> it's like a field of flowers here, look. Let's see what's on the cards. 
the Three of Wands, and the Four of Cups. Nothing's jumping out, really. I was a bit jumpy earlier. I scared myself. The sugar pot hit um, like a Pyrex dish that I have. I was like, I'm scaring myself here. That's interesting. Okay, well, I'm sure it's all going to come in with what we've just read about. Because it normally does, doesn't it? Okay. I think we're going to just read from the book. Just a bit of hair there. <laughs> and what's the bottom of the deck? The Empress. Okay. So there's something for us to learn here in this session. The Three of Wands is coming from the solar plexus. Okay. The third chakra. The Empress is coming from the heart. Then we have the Four of Cups, which is coming from the heart chakra. So we're like moving our way up. I'm not sure which way these are. What one's the crown and what one's the um, third eye. But we have the Seven of Cups. I reckon that's the third eye. I could be wrong. And then we have the lovers. And then we have the hanged woman. I feel like you're just coming out of your cocoon. Right, let's have a look. Three of Wands. <clears throat> Now these are put into colour sections. Okay, the Three of Wands is the card of intentional thought. She sends her emotional energy into the Wands crystal of manifestation. Her focus has calmed the sea of emotions surrounding her. The stars imply the magic has happened. The spell has been cast. Can you ignite all the wands and allow them to light the way to your destiny? Let's find out what else is going on. Four of Cups. The card of wishful, wishful thinking. She makes no effort because she simply does not want what she is being offered. The universe offers her something better than what she wished for, yet she cannot see her true path, for she refuses to let go of her personal vanity. <laughs> Stop playing with the hair, Lucy. <laughs> Seven of cups. <laughs> okay. Right, well... It was the wrong way round. This isn't the third eye. This is the crown chakra. <clears throat> Seven of Cups. The state of emotional overwhelm. She appears unconcerned with the choices before her, perhaps implying that the decision is not hers to make. I felt there was a swap of energy. I actually felt like this was like the divine masculine's energy. But he's feeling like the divine feminine's. You're kind of getting a feel for each other's feels, feelings. The lovers. Because you can't see who this is. And it, they're all females. So it's like this empress energy has been exchanged. Let's have a look at the lovers. It's the first Mage of Arcana we've come across. The Fool discovers the delicious pleasure of desire. The Fool stands viewing the love she desires, observing passion and desire. Or is she in the picture looking upon her own experience. 
This is her opportunity to step into the picture she has only imagined until now, will she? Now what I've been feeling, I don't know how to kind of explain it to you, but it's like all the emotions that you felt, uh, Divine Feminine, now that you've evolved, uh, you're a lot more calmer, calm and collective. Okay, collected, collective. As a collective, we're calm. Uh, but I have the message that really the Divine Masculine's feeling like what you were feeling. Uh, so the infatuation, the desire. Okay. The Fool stands viewing the love she desires, observing passion and desire. Or is she in the picture, looking upon her own experience? This is her opportunity to step into the picture she has only imagined until now, will she? Okay. Then let's go to the hanged woman. That's oh, another major arcana. The fool pauses her future. The fool has become trapped by the things she has overlooked and must now pause and do nothing. It's like with the menopause. It's like, is this a pause that we have? It's the men that are pausing. This is... <laughs> I believe it's talking about the divine masculine, okay? He's going through what you've been through. The foal has become trapped by the things she has overlooked and must now pause and do nothing. Like the mountains of ice floating behind her, she must remain frozen. Any moment could unsettle the progress she has made. And then we have the Empress. The Hanged Woman, the Hanged Man. This could be you, Divine Feminine, then, this last card. Because I don't feel like it's anything for you to be doing. You just need to be, continue being. The Empress is here. Okay. The fool learns of a compassionate heart. Now the fool's normally the divine masculine's energy, so this does make sense. I feel like Rumi's going to help us understand a lot more about what's going on. Okay. The fool sits listening to the ways of the empress, who offers a safe place to be open and relaxed in her presence. Notice that she does not look at her pupil. Rather, she's focused on the lesson she is offering. Will the fool learn it? Very interesting. Okay, let's get a roomie. We're going to keep these messages, if I can, like short and sweet. Okay, and then it's like quicker for me to get back on <laughs> and get lots done in between. Okay, so let's have a look. We'll take into like this. This colour here. The courage of your love. So I'm feeling really the Divine Masculine's feeling. Um, all the feelings that you have embraced. Okay, let's have a look. Rumi will tell us. Won't you, Rumi? Of course. Whirling goddess. Card number 13. It's kind of like, do you feel what I feel? I want to really touch that, uh, <laughs> that hair. <laughs> it says, lose your head. Not a single thread that has a head can go through the eye of a needle. Rumi. Come, my love. Are you dizzy yet? If you can still find your feet, then that is okay with me. But if you can still find your head, then I will take issue. There is a great dance, but it cannot be danced with choreographed steps. Choreographed. <laughs> Steps. No, this great dance demands a response, 
rather than an initiation, a reaction rather than a direction. So let us dissemble and lose our heads to the great music, the rhythm held steady in our beating heart, our beating hearts. Our feet shall be moving whilst our minds, inadequate to the task, take the night off. There is somewhere you are meant to be. It is here, now, in this moment. There is a gift right under your nose and fragrant wine in your glass. Let me just check. <laughs> We've turned the coffee to a fragrant, a fragrant wine. It's not my cup. <laughs> it must be yours. <clears throat> <laughs> just let it be I will there is somewhere you are meant to be it is here now in this moment there is a gift right under your nose and fragrant wine in your glass gleaming red as the most precious rubies to be here now you must pass through the keyhole but your head will tell you this is this is not possible unless the door is unlocked even though your body is passing through the keyhole of that locked door into the endless world beyond. Leaving your mind to be in its struggles for a moment. I'm just like, I don't really know what's going on. My mouth's playing up again. <clears throat> it's like I have no control over the muscles in my mouth. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> So to be here now, you must pass through the keyhole, but your head will tell you this is not possible unless the door is unlocked, even though your body is passing through the keyhole of that locked door into the endless world beyond. Leave your mind to be in its struggles for a moment. Without you laying witness to it, your mind will become like the dog howling for his master's return, even as he steps out the front door. It's quite interesting because now I'm feeling like with my mouth not being able to speak, it's like, so the feminines, you will be experiencing, I did mention this about the passion, you'll be feeling the jealousy of the divine masculines, maybe the being speechless, not actually physically being able to talk. <laughs> and I feel like he's like letting you know that... Um, But what the energy has been like, you'll know, okay, <laughs> who it resonates with. Okay. Oh, my heart's beating really fast. I don't want to reread all that again. You can see, I don't know if you could see, can you see all the rainbow effect on my face? It's from my love heart in the wind room. It's got crystals in it. All of them. Two, four, how many have we got? Two, four, six, seven, eight. I reckon it's got a... It's got a clear quartz crystal in there to heighten it all. Okay. Woo, a bit blinding. <laughs> all I can see now is rainbows. Without you laying witness to it, your minds will become like the dog howling for his master's return, even as he steps out the front door. Frustrated temporarily, he will chew on some shoes, then fall asleep peacefully until, he's, until his master returns. So leave your mind trusting, chewing a little, until you are truly through the keyhole, when it can rest. Leave it be, instead come dance with me. This is taking me to like kind of the feeling of how the masculine felt when you actually parted ways, what kind of happened then. It was like he was howling for like your return, as soon as kind of you stepped out of the door. Frustrated temporarily, he would chew on some shoes, and then fall asleep peacefully until I feel like you return, Divine Feminine. This oracle brings you a message. You are, you are at a point of growth where your mind can hold you back rather than urge you forward. If you have, like so many, used your mind to support you, to shore up your sense of self in the world and to gain a sense of certainty about how the world works, then this is no easy leap. 
it will seem as though you are being asked to pass through the keyhole. Of course, your mind will stop and argue for all the reasons why the door should be opened instead of remaining closed, making the task seem so much harder than it needs to be. But this is the mind in resistance. Don't place too much stock in the claims that life should be other than it is. You are being asked to dance rather than understand, to lay the thoughts to rest and to come alive. It is the braver, most trusting soul that dares put the mind to one side and say, tonight we dance, my heart and I, in the great rousing music of the beloved beating heart, and I will not miss one step. And to awaken the next day and do that all over again and again and again. You are ready, you see, sweet soul dancer. You are ready to live beyond what you know, to have it not matter if you don't understand how life can work itself out or how it could be that someone so normal and ordinary as you and I could also be so magnificent, wild and divine. The need for answers and plans, assurances, assurances and explanations is passing out of your world now. You are not to wait for permission, for explanation, or even for another dance partner, for I am already inviting you onto the great dance floor. You are to let go of any stigma around not knowing. When someone asks you what you are going to do next or how you are going to manage, you are given this divine mandate with relish, reveal the truth. I do not know. Know nothing and dance, sweet soul, for all will unveil itself to you in perfect harmony and timing. Your heart shall create the steps in response to the music of the spheres happening now, alive and spontaneous and free. This oracle brings you a special message. If there is an issue, apparently unsolvable or un, un, unknowable in your life now, the divine is handling it. The divine is in the middle of it, working through the knot and unravelling it. Fear not, do the sacred ritual and give yourself permission to take the night off from worry. Repeat this heavenly prescription daily as needed. Say aloud, I give my heart to like beat him. I give my heart permission to lead this dance. I give my mind some time off. No more worry or doubt, planning or resisting. Instead I surrender. Instead I open. Instead I allow. I allow. I allow. And all unfolds with perfection, divine timing and the miracle of grace. With Rumi as my sole witness, so be it. You have completed your honouring ritual. And I have completed this reading for now. Okay, I will catch up with you guys soon. Take care, much love. Bye for now.